Today we're going to talk about some properties of multiplication. Let's look at some examples. Here the question asks us which property of multiplication is shown. And they give us this equation. 3 times 1 is equal to 1. Down at the bottom you can see we have several different properties of multiplication. Which one of these is being shown in this problem? This is an example of the identity property. The identity property says that a times 1 is equal to a. Any number multiplied by 1 is that original number. That's what we're seeing here. 3 times 1 is just 3 again. This is the identity property. Here we have the same thing. 3 times 1 is 3 again. This is the identity property. We have a number multiplied by 1 giving us that number back. Here we have a different rule. Any number multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. It doesn't matter if it's 5 times 0, 11 times 0, or 419 times 0. The answer is always going to be 0. That's what we call the zero property of multiplication. This one looks more complicated, but really isn't so bad. What's the difference between the two sides of this equation? The answer is how the terms are grouped. Over here, we have a 2 and a 3 multiplied together inside the parentheses. Over here, we have a 3 and a 5 multiplied together inside the parentheses. Being able to change the order that the parentheses are in is what we call the associative property of multiplication. The things that you include in parentheses don't make a difference at the end of the day. We're going to get the same answer. In this case, let's verify that that's true. We do our parentheses first. 6. 5 times 6 will be 30. On the other side, 3 times 5, that's 15. 15 times 2 is also 30. This is the associative property in action. Here's another example. There are no parentheses here, but we switch the order. Instead of 5 times 2, we have 2 times 5. These are both equal to 10. The fact that you can change the order of the elements that are being multiplied is called the commutative property. That's going to be the property we see here. Here we see it again. 2 times 5, 5 times 2. It's the same numbers in a different order. That's the commutative property. This is another one that looks very complicated, but let's look at what happened. On the right-hand side, we have 1 multiplied by a sum, 4 plus 5. On the left-hand side, we have a sum of two products, 1 times 4 plus 1 times 5. This is what we call the distributive property, because you take the 1 that's being multiplied by the sum, and you distribute it. You spread it out so that it's multiplying the 4 and the 5, and then you add them up. This looks very confusing, but let's see how it works out in practice. On the left-hand side, 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 5 is 5. On the right-hand side, we have 1 times 4 plus 5, which is 9. So we have 1 times 9, which is just 9 the same as the 4 plus 5 we get from the left. So don't be worried if this looks intimidating right now. We're going to see some more examples, and in practice, it's, it's easy to implement. Here we have another example of distributive property. We take the 4, and we distribute it. We multiply it by the 1, which gives us this term. Then we multiply by the 2, which gives us this term. Then, since we started with addition on the left-hand side, we add those two things together.
here we go again. The same property that works with addition also works with subtraction. We take the 2 and distribute it. Multiply the 3, 2 times 3. Multiply the 1, 2 times 1. Then we join those two products the same way that the 3 and the 1 were originally joined. We see a subtraction on the left, so we get a subtraction on the right. You can distribute multiplication over addition or subtraction, but only those two, addition and subtraction. One last example of the distributive property. We take the 4 and we distribute it. 4 times 5, that gives us this term. Then 4 times 2 gives us that term. Because the 5 and the 2 are joined with a minus, we use a minus on the right as well. That's the distributive property. And that's it. I know that some of those rules were maybe a little intimidating, but doing more practice will make it a lot easier. These are very useful things to know.